Hi there, me, your friendly, humble neighborhood stroke assaulter, who apparently can't talk. Thank you, the stroke. No, just having a bad day, off, so to speak. And my co-host, Crash the Wonderbird. He's actually a bit friendlier today. Well, he's always friendly. Um, so, this is going to be my week three return to work video. First off, I'd just like to recognize I've gained a bunch of new subscribers recently. Um, thank you. I'm now up to 53. I don't know how I know you. I probably don't know you personally. Um, but that being said, um, thank you. Thank you for joining the party. Uh, did a couple videos recently that were pretty heady topics. One was sex after stroke. Well, in four days I got 60 viewers, so I didn't know you people were that horny. Hmm. Uh, another video was actually, it's three days old. It's got 33 viewers. I'm actually quite surprised it, it's got that much traction. It's on a fairly involved topic called suicide after suicide and self-harm after stroke. Um, so... For those of you that have watched both of those videos, thank you. So let's just talk about my third week back to work. So this week I went from working three hours a day to four. Well, I noticed it a lot. Uh, it, that extra hour did make a difference. Um, still coming to terms with having memory out of context or not being able to remember at all. The, the fine gentleman. And if you're watching this, yes, I just cast aspersions upon what little character you do have and called you a gentleman um, that I've been working with um, during my return to work portion. Him and I just basically came to an agreement. I'm going to remember, or I'm, I'm not going to remember how I know stuff, but I'm going to know I know it. Or I'm not going to remember that I know stuff, and I'm just going to let it go. right? Just going to goose fob by that moment. Just going to rub my ears and say goose fob by and just... Just forget the fact that, yeah, no, that's what I'm doing. I'm going to just forget the fact that I don't know things or I do know things, but I don't know how. And it actually works out kind of-ish okay. Yeah, you're good now? Good. So, yeah, so that's what I'm doing. I'm just just trying to work through the moment and just accept the fact that eventually the filing cabinet that is my brain will put all the files back where they kind of belong. That's what I'm sort of hoping. Um, I've noticed... I've been fatigued and been tired, but it's not the same nature and quality of me being fatigued and tired even two, three months ago. Is that because of the new medication? Um, is that because I'm just ready for that level of activity? I don't know. Um, but last week, I fell asleep in my lazy boy chair. And it was just because I was tired. It was just like just nap time. Just literally just fell asleep because I had to sleep, not because I was exhausted or fatigued. It was just like I put my feet up, I put a movie on, and I just fell asleep. And it was bloody glorious. Um, so for those of you that don't know me, um, I have two roles at my workplace. One, I'm a trainer, so I teach people how to do their jobs or help with return to work or um, with ongoing training campaigns. So it's been unique to see it from the other side of the wall, so to speak. Um, someone helping someone else. Uh, it's actually been kind of rewarding. Uh, also, I'm a technical support agent for a major telecommunications company. Um, I spoke to customers this week. It was a little bit arduous. Um, because the tools we use have changed a little bit in how we assist our customers. But I haven't done it in six months. Uh, the last time I did it was the day before my stroke. So... It's been difficult. It's been challenging. Uh, I still have a, a good amount of anxiety uh, before I go to work because that's the building I had my stroke in. In fact, uh, as I get closer to work, like two, three kilometers away, I, I, it just hits me like a wall. I can just feel it. Um, as soon as I get into the building, it gets a little bit worse. I'm doing what I can to manage it. Don't get me wrong. Like I, I, I start back to counseling on Monday. Uh, the medication I use for anxiety, it works. It, it helps. Um, I know at work I still don't walk the same some days. I know some days I still have communication problems. Luckily, um, this week I only had a couple of events of aphasia, uh, a couple of events of anomia, a couple of events of apraxia. Nothing, nothing really that's going to write home, right? Nothing that's caused me major conflagration. It's happened. And people, far and large, they've been decent. They just ignore it, which is actually the best thing you can do just hold on that is attached 
okay, that's attached. Yeah, you know, like, semi-permanent stuck there? Okay, good. Um, so, I it gets a bit frustrating for me because I know that I know what I want to say, and sometimes it's a case of I just can't get out what I want to say. Sometimes uh, I have difficulty with the word recall thing, right, the anomia. Uh, but by far and large, the gentleman, yes, again, I cast, cast aspersions upon what little character you tend to have. Um, the gentleman I'm working with, uh, he just he just lets it happen, right? And, and, and especially, there's been times where I've been helping a customer out, and I'm trying to put all the pieces together mentally. And it can be a bit of a struggle at times trying to do that. Come here, step up. Step up. There we go. That's funny. So there are times where it's difficult to do simply because it's something that my brain's trying to put it all together. And my brain, best way to describe it, and for those of you who had stroke, you'll probably get what I'm referring to. Your brain feels like it's on fire. Just someone's poured gasoline over it, struck a match, and just chucked. And it's... Don't get me wrong, that is a good feeling because I know when I have that feeling, my brain is legitimately trying to work through a thing. The first time I encountered that feeling was my first day at occupational therapy where they had me do certain things. And that was that was a feeling that... I know my brain is being taxed. I know my brain is under stress. I know there's things that my brain is trying to compute, get through, work around, stuff that, you know... It hasn't done in a while. And that's what that feeling is when your brain is just on fire. And it's like, it's not limited to one location in your brain. It's sort of global. Um, uh, and it just means you're just, at least in my experience, what it means, or at least what I think it means, is it's just the brain trying to reconnect, you know, the neural pathways that haven't been used in a while. It's just my brain trying to, you know, rebuild and reorganize and resort that filing cabinet that got tipped on the floor. Um, so this week has been very rewarding. Because I'll be honest, I was just scared to death of getting on the phone again. Just absolutely scared to death. Um, it went better than I thought it would. Um, it went uh, significantly better than I thought it would. Um, there's only been a couple of times on the phone where I've noticed uh, having some communication deficits. Well, nobody's noticed. Like, no one said anything. I know it's happening. But maybe it's such a subtle, discreet moment um, that you wouldn't even notice it, so to speak. Uh, but I'm just conscious of it. I do know that as the day progresses, even though it is only four hours, I do get it tired on some days. Uh, I've also noticed... The nights that I go to the gym uh, and have a workout, the next day usually is a better day because of that workout. Um, not sure why. It just it just feels that way to me. It's sort of a, because I've been journaling every day at work um, about where my anxiety is, my anomia, my apraxia, if I have a headache, um, if I've had to take medication. Because I'm trying to draw the links. I'm trying to draw the correlations to help determine what works, what doesn't work. And I'm not going to say that, you know, my conclusions will be the be-all and the end-all. I'm just trying to find a benchmark as to sort of what I can do to help myself, right? Um, what what things work for me, what things don't work for me. Uh, what do I find as a stressor? What don't I find as a stressor? How stressful is it? And I'm just trying to piece it all together so when I see my counselor for the first time on Monday and any type of uh, planning we do clinically, I've got some information I can give her. Also, that way I have the ability to go back to my employer and go, hey, listen, I've noticed this, this, and this, and what do you think? Um, again, this comment will be directed for the gentleman, me, you, um, about that some employers don't get it. Well, I'm happy to report my employer gets it. My employer still gets it. Um, you know, and, and everything that I've been doing at work, by far and large, seems to be working, right? It, um, they've got a fairly structured plan. Uh, you know, what I mean by that is there is a structured plan, 
but next week I'm going to have another meeting with my manager and we're going to sit there and discuss the plan and we're going to figure the next best steps. So this really feels like a collaborative effort, right? It doesn't feel like they're just like, oh, you need to do this and you need to do that and you need to do this and you need to do that, right? It's, it's like, what are you going to do today? Like, this is what we'd like to do. Let's see if you can do it. And, and there's no expectation that I'm expected to complete it. Right? Like, you will do this, and you will do it to the end of your shift, and that's the way it's going to be. Right? No. It's more of, this is what we want to try. Right? If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But this is what we're going to try today. And, you know, maybe I'm stubborn. Okay, yeah, I am stubborn. Um, and maybe I'm determined and committed to get back to exactly where I was before the stroke happened. But I'm, I'm more than willing to try anything to, 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 to get back to where I need to be. Uh, I'm more than willing to do anything I need to do to get back to where I need to be. The only thing is I can't say is how long that's going to take. Okay. This last week really felt like I turned a corner. Mainly because, you know, I didn't fall apart first time I actually had to do, do my job. Um, that there were occasions where I got a bit overwhelmed, but it didn't fall apart. Uh, the emotional fluidity still there, but it's not the same nature and quality, right? Um, so there are moments where I still have a little bit of a cry after work. I'm not as exhausted as I was the first week, week and a half when I came back from, uh, home from work. So there are going to be times where I know that I might be exhausted. So next week is again, another four hour week. And at the end of next week, that'll make one month back to work. And at the end of that four hour week, I start adding one hour every day for the next couple of weeks. So the week after it'll be five and then six and then seven and then back up to eight. Ultimately, I'm still working that decision tree to help me determine if this is something that is going to work right now. Um, I'm pretty, pretty confident that this, this should work, right? I don't, unless something really significant and untoward was to happen, it's something that was you know, like for whatever reason, I have a major setback, uh, of whatever reason, I don't know. Um, and we'll see how that goes. I honestly don't know, uh, what that'll look like. Right. Um, and at that point, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't to manage my anxiety. Um, I start counseling on Monday, uh, and I'm right now investigating getting an emotional support angle. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go look at a dog on the weekend, if not early next week, um, and we'll see if the dog is a good fit and then figure out financing from there, um, which will give this little guy a sibling of sorts. Right? He's actually in a cuddly mood right now. I don't know why that is, but he is. Um, he is nice occasionally. See? when he's not velociraptor or trying to pluck hair or whatever. So ultimately this week's been fairly rewarding. Uh, it's been very challenging at times because I don't want to be spoon fed, right? And the, the trainer subject matter expert I'm working with, he's not doing that, right? Um, he's treating me like anybody else, right? Um, in fact, He's given me latitude to make mistakes where I need to make them, which is the most important thing. Right? You're not going to learn unless you make mistakes, because when you get a test back and you only got 80%, do you fret and worry over the answers you got right? No, you, you don't learn from what you already know. You learn from making a mistake. So he's been copacetic with allowing me to step on myself occasionally. And then the... And then at the end of that interaction, we have the, hey, what went right, what went wrong, you know, conversation. So this has been a brilliant, a brilliant time this week. Um, so right now I still have training wheels. Next week, they probably come off, right? If everything goes as well as it does, next week the training wheels should come off. Uh, and if uh, we'll see how the anxiety is going and I'll continue with the gym. And again, I'd just like to thank my 53 subscribers for, you know, hanging in there, uh, joining this merry little band. Uh, and 
if you happen to like what you've been watching in the last coming up on seven months and three days so three months and three days from today it'll be seven months since my stroke okay. so for those of you who've been watching the channel uh thank you if you haven't subscribed please i would encourage you to like share subscribe uh maybe hit the little notification bell so when i launch a video you'll be aware of it uh, if you happen to know someone's going through their own post-stroke journey or supporting someone going through a post-stroke journey please again point the channel out to them uh, if you want to reach out to me directly you can get in contact with me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com um, if you want to see me cover a topic either leave it in a comment down below uh, or uh, again email me directly at strokeassaulter at gmail.com and most importantly if you happen to see either in yourself or someone around you the signs or symptoms of a stroke uh, which are generally accepted to be someone appears to be befuddled or confused someone who's having vision problems you uh, you can't see it in one eye you see in grayscale you can see only the top of the world or the bottom of the world the world's kind of fuzzy uh, you have facial droop right one side of your face droops uh, you uh, have an inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all you can't smile equally effectively or at all you have speech problems slurred stuttering speech inappropriate word usage for situation or context um, you can't stand can't or you, or you can't stand on 80 you can't hold up your own body weight please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911 something so simple and save a life